I'm back in the green, baby. It's been, you know, two weeks, maybe closer to three that I've been in the red. That was the first time my portfolio has been in the red. But as of today, I am back in the green officially. Not by much as I will show you here in a minute, but I'm in the green. And so before I get started, if you're new to my channel, be sure to subscribe. I'm somebody that's very transparent and I'm here for the long term and let's get wealthy and learn together. So let's look at my portfolio. Let's show you uh, just how much in the green I am. And I'm sad to say it's not much, but hey, I'm in the green by almost 1%. That's $360. Um, today was a big rally. You can never time the market. You know, there's a lot of bad things going on right now. But I will say the companies that really made a big day for me to bump me up into the green were Amazon number one. You know, this company was in the red. It was getting deeper and deeper into the red and then it shot right back up. And you know, a lot of the other companies like T-Row, T-Row was down close to 15%. Now it's only down 4%. Um, so my biggest losers are Meta, big surprise, Tattooed Chef, big surprise, 3M uh, is still down 12%, and then I would say the other two are AT&T, which is pretty much never been in the green for me, and then Warner Bros. Discovery, which came off of that stock when they spun off that part of their business. Um, but overall, I'm in the green, and I wanna talk about this, because you know during the deep red days, a lot of people were fearful and they sold but I stayed in the game and I kept adding to my portfolio. And I think that's the way that you make money and come out on top in the end. And you know, for those people that sold, you know, they, they put themselves at risk of losing a lot of money if the market goes up. Because if you miss those big green days, those are the days you miss out on a lot of the profit. And you know, I could go right back into the red as quick as you know this next week or it can keep going up 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 into the green uh, so the important thing to know is that the stock market and the economy are two separate things related but different they don't always follow each other uh, the market is definitely more forward looking where the economy is what's happening right there right then and now uh, so I think with the stock market, why we're seeing some green is it's possible everything could have been priced in uh, this whole 2022 year that we saw go down and now it's starting to say, okay, we've priced in a lot of bad and now we're going right back up and any good news could really propel it heavily into the green. So that's something to keep, keep in mind, but it could still go into the red. Again, we can't predict these things. Um, but you know, if you look at the economy, for example, so we just saw the stock markets going up but the economy is still in bad shape, right? We have record inflation, and we have the Secretary of the Treasury coming out and saying, oops, I didn't you know, realize how bad this inflation situation was. I kind of got it wrong. Uh, so she underestimated inflation, which you know, to the everyday person like you and I, I think we saw these prices everywhere around us going up and it just didn't make sense that you know all these people saying we're going to get it under control, it's going to start downtrending, just didn't make sense. And this last report showing that inflation actually rose instead of downtrending just kind of solidified that what's happening out there that we see for ourselves with our own eyes is what was reported. So uh, not even the professionals get it right, and that's something to keep in mind. Uh, we have layoffs. They're, they're starting to tick up. We see articles like this and many companies are starting to lay off. Each month it seems to get more and more, and this is something that can just get worse because with higher inflation, that means more uh, costs and expenses for companies, and they gotta cut somewhere, and that's what we're seeing with a lot of these companies. We still have shortages. Uh, we're still dealing with that and supply chain issues. We have geopolitical conflict, and that's a wild card. We don't know where that's gonna go. And then, you know, of course, the Fed is you know, increasing the rates pretty significantly and that's gonna affect the market or the economy as well and the market. Uh, so just to show you the market, the stock market and the economy don't always align. They're two separate things, they're somewhat related. Um, but you know, I wanna show you an example of that. If we look at this S&P 500 stock chart over the last five years, I highlighted a specific area. At the very lowest part of the pandemic, what did it do from there? It went up. 
uh, from the pandemic low to the end of 2021 over a hundred percent it went up almost a hundred and seven percent now when that pandemic low happened in march the news the economy only got worse and worse we had shutdowns we had companies grounding their you know the airlines are grounding their planes we had COVID getting you know spreading at faster rates we had just so much going on so this is the proof that the economy and the stock market aren't uh, hand in hand they're somewhat related but they are two different animals and you have to keep that in mind and right now what we're seeing is even though things are bad the stock market can start going up and i think that's because after the market prices in so much bad there's a point where it really can't price in much more and the only thing to do from there is go up so just keep that in mind to protect your portfolio your investments I think protection is key um, because a lot of people do get it wrong, even the professionals. So the best way to hedge against that is to have a protection and risk mindset. Always keep those two things in mind. So I have some tips to kind of, you know, do this, pr provide protection and reduce your risk, which I think has really helped my portfolio and it perform overall really good compared to um, other portfolios that I've seen. So one thing to keep in mind is I think it's always important to stay diversified. And let me dig a little deeper than what you probably hear because normally you hear diversify between the sectors of the stock market, which yes, you should. But from there, I think you should also diversify between dividend growth companies and peer growth companies because both are gonna do different things in different situations. Right now, while the economy is down, the dividend stocks are shining where the growth stocks aren't, but that will switch at some point. They always go back and forth. And so you want both so you can benefit during both times. And now that growth stocks are down, I'm adding to them. And then when that switches, I'll add to the dividend stocks. But right now the dividend paying stocks are the ones that are holding my portfolio up and they're paying me just like they always have. So I think that is good as well as probably adding some other things like international exposure, for example, I think that's great. Um, I was having a conversation in my comments about Canadian bank stocks. That's another way to gain exposure outside of the U.S. So I'm thinking about that. So thank you for the person that brought that up. Um, and, you know, I think it's, it's easy to jump on the bandwagon of hype. Uh, we saw small caps and the IPO stocks that were really popular. But look what happened. They've all crashed massively 70 plus percent or more in a lot of the stocks. My tattooed chef stock that you see is down over 50% was one of those. I went with the hype. I bought in at the wrong time and I have to face the consequences. So being diversified is good. Not putting all your money into uh, individual stocks is good, which is my next point. Be well balanced. My rule of thumb is don't put any more than 10% uh, allocation towards one stock or one holding because I don't care what stock it is. Anything uh, bad can happen and turn around the you know, fundamentals of that company, turn around the story of that company. It's happened before where people just thought, oh, this stock is solid, nothing will ever happen to it, and then they do. So GE is an example of that. So I think, uh, you know, instead of me, if I were to put all my money into Meta or Tattooed Chef, you know, or at least a huge portion, like 75%, I would be hurting pretty bad right now, but because I followed my 10% rule and am diversified, that's really uh, kept my portfolio healthy. Uh, another thing is avoid listening to those gimmicks out there from others where they say, oh, this, is, this stock will 10x your money in a year, or, or I hate the word guarantee because nothing is guaranteed in life and nobody can predict the future. So just be cautious of those. I think those are red flags if you ever hear those. That's not something you'll hear from me. Um, now, some things that are not specifically directly investments, but related to them is it's so important to keep at least three months of, of savings. So you take your expenses for the month, multiply by that by three, at least have that set aside. I recommend putting it in a high yield savings account. I use Ally Bank, which is, I think, a gr great bank to put my money in that yields decent amounts right now it, I just got a notification today that it's bumping it up to 1% interest that I get on my money I put in there so I think a high yield savings account like Ally Bank is great put your money in there 
and resist investing all your money. It's hard. During those big red days, I wanted to dip into that savings fund, that rainy day fund and invest, but I'm glad I didn't touch that because you never know what's going to happen and you just need that money set aside, set it and forget it. It provides a lot of comfort, a lot of security because the last thing you want to do is pull out of your investments if something happens because that money is meant to be in investments, be there for the long term and make you wealthy in the end. So keep those savings uh, set aside and just don't touch them unless it's absolutely necessary. Another thing is pay off your debt. Debt is expensive. It, it, it ties you down and it can last a long time. So in, when you pay off that debt, I have a friend right now who is being very responsible. He's, he um, has some money that he came across and he's paying off his debt. And what that's going to allow you to do is instead of putting, let's say, for example, 300 bucks a month towards a car payment, you can now put that 300 bucks towards investing or your savings or maybe a vacation, right? So it's a good thing to reduce your debt uh, and you know that just frees you up so much. So focus on that if you do have debt, pay off that credit card debt, pay off those student loans, uh, whatever it might be, just focus on reducing, especially car loans I think too, so reduce that debt. Then I think do your research. Um, you know, do your due diligence. This is something that, you know, it's easy to get lazy. It's easy to listen to others on YouTube, on forums, on Facebook groups. Uh, you know, I am guilty of this. When I first started investing, I invested in a company called Altria. They're a tobacco company. And I will say that that was a horrible investment because if I took the time to do my own research and not just go off of someone's post saying it's a high dividend, invest in it, I would have realized that this is a company that their product is downtrending year over year. Plus, they just now, I think a day or two ago, are banning the Juul products, the, you know, the smokeless tobacco products uh, in the US, which is gonna hurt that company. And I just don't see why I would want to invest in a company where their future product is declining year over year. So if I would have done that, I would have never invested in the first place. Luckily I got out with a small gain, but it could have been in the red and I could have lost out on money. So always take the time to do your own research. Uh, now on the flip side, I do think that it is good to follow certain YouTubers, <laughs> to be a part of forums and Facebook groups, uh, because it, it is good to get a different perspective. Look at others' strategies. And I am transparent. I, I, promise you, I promised you guys this and I'm doing it every video. I'm showing you my portfolio performance. Not many people do that, especially in the bad times. And I showed you guys my portfolio when it went into the red several times. So I think it's good to get those other perspectives, strategies, and opinions because that's just going to help expand your knowledge as well. But be careful to follow those, again, that have those kind of gimmicky things where they say this is a guarantee or this is going to 10x your money because I've seen too many times people follow that and it just burns them in the end. I'm not a gimmick person. Um, I cannot just morally do that to somebody where I put that kind of information out there and put someone's financial future at risk. Uh, of course, I'm going to put my opinion. I'm going to put my bullish or bearish thesis but I'll never put a guarantee out there because I think that's wrong because nobody can predict the future. And if you're doing that to others, it's not right. So, um, you know, with that said, I think my portfolio has held up very well because of these things that I've mentioned. You know, I am diversified. I'm balanced. I feel uh, very well. I have a rainy day fund. I've paid off most of my debt, so I don't have a lot of debt. Um, and I follow others that I feel benefit me. You know, they always say surround yourself. The, the people you surround yourself with are the, you know, kind of a reflection of who you are. And I think that goes for investing in who you follow, what groups you're a part of and stuff like that. So find quality and stick with it. Um, now, the last thing I want to talk about is not only did you see my portfolio just go into the green, but I've been collecting dividends. So the good thing with dividend uh, paying companies is even though the stock market this year went down significantly, I still got paid my dividends. In fact, a lot of the companies increased their dividend payout. And so that is awesome, right? So we can see here so far in 
2022, I've received 435 bucks. And in the last two and a half years I've been investing, I've received over $1,500. That's just in dividends. That's sitting back and not doing a thing. That's putting my money in the stock market and, let, and letting my money work for me. That's called passive income and I think it's a great strategy. Now in the month of June, I'm almost at 120 bucks. I still have a few more stocks and holdings to collect from this month. So I expect this to be closer to about 150, 60-ish, uh, which will be my highest month yet that I've collected dividends. So again, being transparent, showing you guys that, and you know, dividend uh, growth companies that you invest in is a great strategy I believe in. Again, I am diversified between dividend growth stocks and grow, peer growth stocks. I think that's great. And so the dividend growth stocks are really benefiting me right now by paying me, you know, rewarding me for, for investing in their company. And then I deploy that where I want to deploy it. So what I want to say today is I've, I'm in the green barely. That just shows you that the stock market can do anything at any time and you just need to stay invested. You need to keep doing your research, investing in quality companies, you know, have a plan. Just like the things I listed, have a plan, stick with it, but be open as well because things can change and, you know, just, just don't fall for the fear on those red days. Stay invested because things can turn around quickly. And so, yeah, let me know what you guys have done to, that you think has really benefited your portfolio that I might have not mentioned so others can you know, learn and, you know, gather some knowledge as well. Again, if you like this content, be sure to subscribe. I really appreciate all those that are subscribed and we will see you next time on Mark Arnold's Finance.